Okay, I'm going to call this meeting to order. We can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, Mr. Scott, if we could do roll call. Sure. Uh, Miss Albright. Here. Mrs. Bell. Here. Mrs. Godfrey. Here. Mrs. Jerry. Here. Mrs. Leone. Here. Mrs. Olson. Here. Mr. Scott here. Mr. Strobel. Here. And Mrs. Thompson. Here. All present. All right. Um, Moving on to the superintendent's report, Dr. Cooper. Thank you, Madam President. As the end of the 21-22 school year comes to a close, many of our buildings are sponsoring end-of-year events, um, obviously in person, which is great to see something that we haven't had the opportunity to provide the last couple of years. Uh, it's great to see our parents, guardians, caregivers, and community participate in these various events. Um, bridge day transitions have happened or are scheduled to happen for our learners transitioning between buildings. As you're aware, uh, we have uh, two grades that will be transitioning to the IC, which are current grade one and two students, uh, current grades four and five to the middle school, and grade eight to the high school, uh, based on our right sizing plans for the district in 22-23. And our incoming kindergarten learners have the opportunity to participate in a transition program through our SAC program this summer. Our kindergarten registrations continue to occur and uh, basically at this point we're in alignment with the number of registrations that are typical for this point of the year. And a uh, reminder, commencement 2022 will be next Friday in the stadium at 7 p.m. Uh, reporting information for the board will be included in this Friday's update and that concludes my report. Thank you Dr. Cooper. Okay, moving on to procedures for public participation. Um, prepared statements that are to be read to the board should have a copy presented to the board president prior to their being addressed. Comments on agenda items will be made by rising and approaching the microphone, stating your name and address, signing in on the sheet provided. You will be granted up to three minutes to address the board. Your three minute time limit will start when you speak. When three minutes are over, you will be asked to be seated. Any item that is not on the agenda, as well as agenda items acted upon, comments can be made at the designated section at the end of the agenda. And having said that, um, do we have any presentations by the public on agenda items tonight? $800,000 startup cost for transportation. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments 
have any comments on agenda items? Nobody is responsible this coming year. The school has, you're voting on for TransFinder for $18,750. The school's going to pay. When, if you went for roads or climbs, they already have TransFinder and they would have already paid for that since it was in the contract. Now, Grace has no routing obligation for this coming year. So now you have another $18,750 coming out of the school budget for them, for routing. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments on agenda items? Okay, seeing none. Uh, moving on to announcements, um, we have no agenda edits. Um, there will be an executive session after tonight's meeting to discuss personnel. And moving on to consent items. Can I get a motion for consent items 3A1 through 16 with the exception of number 9? Mr. Schrobel, can I get a second? I'll second it. I'll second. Uh, Ms. Thompson, um, any discussion that you'd like to have? Yeah, can, as a board member, can I have an answer to that question about the $800,000 setup and why it's $200,000 difference? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I'm not going to answer that question. Um, I don't think that's the case. Part of the negotiations process with both vendors, proposed vendors, had a startup stipend involved in it. And that comes off of their contract amount? It was part of this year's um, budget for a startup cost. Mm -hmm. Would it have been nice if that was disclosed to the board? Um, mm -hmm. When is the next time that they will get a There won't be another one. There won't be. Mm -hmm. Not until the uh, services are. Yeah, there won't July be another. First startup cost any anything else to discuss okay can I get a vote this is Aubrey yeah this is Bell yes this is Godfrey yes this is Jared yes this is Leone yes Mr. Scott yes Mr. Strobel yes this is Thompson yes and this is Olson. Yes. Nine yes. Okay, moving on to uh, 3A9. Can I get a motion for that? Motion. Ms. Bell, can I get a second from Mr. Jerick? Um, so, um, Ms. Um, Leona, can you just let everybody know why we're voting on this one separately? Yeah. Um, the company that I work for. Okay. Any. Um, uh, comments, questions, concerns on the, this item before we vote on it? Um, Mr. Scott. Uh, Ms. Ms. Leone's going to abstain, but for the rest of us. Okay. okay. Did that already. Um, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Albright. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mr. Jarrett. Yes. Mrs. Leone is abstaining. Mr. Scott, yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. And Mrs. Olson? Yes. Eight yeses. Okay, moving on to personnel. Um, 4A, 1 through 1 through 3. Um, can I get a motion for those? Motion. Ms. Bell, can I get a second? Mr. Strobel. Any um, comments, questions, concerns on personnel <laughs> consent items? 
Can I get a vote? Absolutely. Uh, Mrs. Albright. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Jarrett. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Sherwood. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. Nine yes. All right. Finance added consent. Um, 5A1 through 12 with the exception of um, number three. Can I get a motion for those? Thank you. Mr. Scott, can I get a second? I'll second. Mr. Strobel. Comments, questions, concerns on those? Ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Albright. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mrs. Jerry. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Sherwell. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Olson. Yes. Nine yeses. Okay. So now can I get a, a motion for 5A? Julia? Yeah. I just realized that there is another river. It's for a, um, it's for a specific student, which uh, you voted on those ones before. I, I did notice it and asked earlier. Okay. Okay. Just sure. No problem. Um, and um, so, if we could get a, um, a motion for five A three. And we have a, your abstain. Yeah, we need a motion for the. We, did we do the motion part already? No. <laughs> Let's do that. Mr. Strobel, oh, can I get a second? <laughs> Ms. Thompson. Uh, and if if um, Ms. Bell can share why she's abstaining on this one. I am abstaining because one of the carriers in the proposal is my employer. Okay. Um, any comments, questions, concerns on that before we vote? Um, Mr. Mr. Scott. Uh, Ms. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Mr. Jarrett. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Sherwell. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. And Mrs. Olson. Yes. Eight yes. Okay. Um, moving on to personnel added consent 6A1 through 3. Can I get a motion for those? Mr. Strobel, can I get a second? Maybe. Mr. Scott. Um, comments, questions, concerns on personnel added consent? Any? We're good? Okay. Um, can I get a vote? Mrs. Albright. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey. Yes. Mr. Jarrett. Yes. Mrs. Leone. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Sherwell. Yes. Mrs. Thompson. Yes. And Mrs. Olson. Yes. Nine yes. Can I get a... Um, a motion for old business, 7A, 1 through 3. Mr. Mr. Jarrett, can I get a second? Second. Ms. Bell. Comments, questions, concerns um, on, the meeting, on the meeting minutes from earlier this May. Can I get a vote? Yep. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Albright. Yes. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mrs. Godfrey? Yes. Mr. Jarrett? Yes. Mrs. Leone? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Olson? Yes. Nine yeses. Okay, I've got nothing under new business. Um, um, and uh, it's time for presentations by the public on issues. Um, can oh. I say something first? Yeah, you bet. I wanted to make a point. So often, um, there's lots of posts on social media, and I just wanted to make the point that as board members, we are discouraged from commenting on social media, so I've been specifically tagged on several posts, and I cannot comment because the Pennsylvania School Board Association discourages us from doing that as board members. If somebody wants to personally contact me, they can email me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Now, 
um, anybody wants to make uh, comments on any issue, um, this is your time. to give updates on racist incidents that happen in the schools. Will we ever get an update or even like a history of what happened, what has happened? And, and that way too, so, you know, talk to kids, make a plan. So, um, I'm gonna jump around here. Um, in regard to the new school buses, I, I did have a question about that. And my question is, is that I know people that have been waiting eight to, to, to nine, even to 10 months for a brand new car. So how will this new company get new school buses with all, I'm sure they have the chips. So, that's, you know, I know people that can't get new cars. So, um, okay, I'm gonna switch to masks. I know that, that old chestnut. So, um, after the masks were taken off the kids, um, Mrs. Leone tried to get the verbiage changed in your protocol slash policy to say if or that we're not going to follow any legal mandate supposedly from the you know from the powers that be. Is there any way to get that changed? Because I'm telling you now, in the fall they're going to try this. It's it's mm -hmm. called the midterm uh, variant, and they're going to try to get our kids masked. Again. So um, anyway. I'm going to keep going. On Friday the 13th, there was an incident at the middle school. <coughs> kids were promoting LGBTQ flags, pushing it into other kids' faces. Then the kids who were sick of the display printed out straight pride flags. Mrs. Rooley started crying and saying to kids, thanks for ruining my Friday, upset over the straight pride flags. Now you have teachers promoting this. Mm -hmm. But God forbid the students who don't want to promote this push back and all hell breaks loose. Thank God Mr. Tower shut it down. But when even but why even let teachers have pride flags or any other flags in their classrooms if you can't have, you know, put a cross back up then. Oh, people's heads would explode. So, um, um, and, and I'm going to refrain from the last part I was going to talk about. So thank you for your time. Have a good night. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep. I don't think it's on. It's been on. It's on my phone, though. Yeah, I just know this. Should be on. It is a good one. I got it. I can't get it. Mr. Rose, can you tap it? Can you tap it for me just to make sure? Okay, yeah, good. All right, Steve Rose. <clears throat> just to clarify, um, when we were in the negotiations, we dropped our price $18 a day for that $600,000. All right? Am I right? What did Christ give up? for 800,000. And also, he can start the year up to three-year-old buses. What's the replacement plan for these buses? He promised you new buses. He's already down to three, and there's no replacement plan in this contract. So, he, all your buses can possibly drop to the second category on the second year of your contract. I would like the answers, please.
with the start of this school year, um, whenever we we spend time researching the questions people ask and we put the, the answers on the website within three or four days, we're usually able to make it by, front, by, by Wednesday, but sometimes it's not until Thursday. And that's been um, our practice since the beginning of the school year. All right. I know what you're looking. Okay. But I bet you did not give out anything for 800000 
Uh, Jim McRae, Douglas Stoll. On May 12, 2022, Pennsylvania Department of Health sent a notice that at least one person at the school board meeting on May 9, 2022, tested positive for COVID-19. In the last week, there have been 876 cases of COVID-19 reported in Berks County. The case trend in Berks County and the United States is starting to trend upwards. I bring this up because I'm wondering what will be the policy response if this trend should continue to increase. What will be done if the monkeypox virus, the next great pandemic, to come and kill us all? Wait a minute. Oh. According to the World Health Organization, the monkeypox virus is spread through close contact with lesions, bodily fluids, respiratory droplets, and contaminated materials. This leads to the impl implementation of masking, social distancing, and quarantines again. While I know that the use of masks have little effect on curbing the spread of COVID-19, because we wouldn't be talking about this two years later if it did, will you force our children to endure that again? There have been reports of adverse effects of wearing masks due to oxygen deprivation and respiratory ailments from prolonged mask wearing. There's also been evidence of developmental issues in regards to children and wearing masks by both them and their teachers. We have finally returned to some sense of normalcy where the children can learn and interact in a meaningful way. Are we going to learn from the history of the last few <coughs> years, or are we doomed to repeat it? Thank you, sir. Anyone else? It's defined by the American Journal of Public Health as a tool, not a theory, 
that integrates transdisciplinary methodologies that draw on theory, exponential knowledge, and critical consciousness to eliminate and combat the roots of structural racism. So this is, of course, I guess it isn't necessarily attached to the board because I mean, there's not really not much they can do about this. Like, racism discrimination in America. Like, of course, they can deal with it in school, but not in the country. But the thing I wanted to bring up, though, is it's interesting to me how people constantly want to bring up racism and discrimination, but they don't want to actually, I guess, like, combat things like white supremacy. Like, it's okay for people to constantly call out, oh, critical race theory is an issue, but they also don't want to talk about, I guess, the historic, the, the, I guess, not like, the historic, I guess, like, impact of the like, people being racist and affecting children. It's okay for people to be called the N-word every day. It's okay for people to be called different other slurs every day. It's okay for people to be threatened every day. And that's not a concern to people because it's considered critical race theory because it's just an opinion. People's perspective to a person of color is often seen as opinion. Of course, there are many like, people in this room who actually care to actually like, protect and help students of color. And I know that there are plenty of allies we have here. It just makes no sense to me how people constantly try to invalidate people's pain. That bit telling a woman who was raped, oh, what you're going through is your own fault because it's the way you're dressed. Like, no, it's not her fault. You can't say that same thing to a person of color for the color of their skin. Like, they can't change that. Just like how a woman cannot change the fact that somebody else decided to make a choice and harm them. And I'm not saying that like, people need to feel guilty all the time for things that, like, I guess, like, have happened in history. No one's expecting you to. No one's expecting anyone to like, give us anything or anything like that. We just want to talk about how sometimes, I guess, we can all learn from our mistakes. People of color as well, not just white people. But also, in addition to that, we also do have to address that it is a problem. Racism is still alive and well in America, as you saw in the Buffalo shooting. No one's talking about replacement theory, but they're talking about how critical race theory is such a problem in this nation. Like, I mean, like, can we get a power history? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you care about students in our Jamaican community? 
because it is really painful to sit aside and see that our school district does not take action for our students unless they are pressured to do so. And in addition, it is ridiculous that students have to demand for change in order to stop the discrimination in these hostile school environments. Students should already be guaranteed a safe school environment and they should not be worried about the next incident report they need to fill out. We cannot silence our students from speaking up. Instead, we should be empowering our students to take action. Daniel Boone, this is the time to right our wrongs. We need to follow our district vision of learning together and I really suggest that after being a part of the 2019 strategic planning meeting, we need to hold another one to eliminate all forms of discrimination in school environments and involve all stakeholders to take action so that no student ever experiences discrimination again. Thank you. Thank you.